Gotham, I can see your slides, but I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, now now we can hear you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, and uh, yes, we are going to talk about uh, big replicate today. Uh, basically, a patented active active transactional data replication scheme. So years of work has been put up towards this uh, data replication algorithm and technology to be live for Hadoop. So what it does, uh, you know, a, a quick demonstration on uh, how this uh, technology basically enables everybody to have a read and write capabilities almost in sync all over their data centers. So these are there are some topics that we are going to cover during the talk, and uh, we are going to also represent a demonstration on how we are actually doing it. So basically, first I would walk uh, through the slides that uh, tells about what this uh, new data replication is about, and and basically uh, getting in depth of uh, how this uh, data replication actually takes place onto a, a data center. So most of you who don't know about active active transactional data replication it's basically active active is uh, is you know when let's say there are two data centers and uh, you know in one data center you have uh, you perform a write command and uh, you basically uh, try to let's say you are creating a directory and you basically try to create that directory onto other data center let's say one data center is in Los Angeles and, and another one is in Chicago and then let's say you are sitting in LA and you're um, performing a write a query onto you know, your database at one data center making a directory let's say a name as test uh, and then you want to uh, you, you another programmer is sitting on Chicago and he's trying to create the same directory with the same name so it would have uh, you know th there is a conflict that uh, the directory uh, cannot be created at one end if it's created uh, at one point so it's basically active active transaction where where you know another user would uh, get a message that uh, you're not able to create the directory since directory has been already created with the same name so this is, uh, uh, you know, when you're performing a read or write across two data centers. So that's basically a little bit of overview on how this technology works. And uh, now going forward, uh, you know, what what is uh, Big Replicate? So as I told, it's, uh, you know, it's basically a WAN disco fusion technique. It's the world's only wide area network WAN active transactional replication technology that delivers, uh, you know, continuous availability and you can have a streaming backup plus you can do migration of your data from one data center to another depending on network latency and uh, across all data centers and then uh, you can use hybrid cloud and burst to cloud depending on the you know your demands and uh, your company's SLAs and uh, about the replication engine it's powered by Vendisco uh, patented technology. So it's basically a, a technology that has been developed over years by Vendisco, and uh, you know it's been a part of IBM. And, uh, and it's an active replication, a transaction replication that uh, does guarantee consistency in data. And uh, we can have any number of uh, clusters any, at any distance. So we can actually uh, connect a lot of data centers and can sync, uh, you know, on all those data centers. Then, then there is uh, the selective replication you can perform based on, you know, you can have certain data folders onto your one data center and you want to, let's say, have uh, the replication of those only, you know, that selected folders onto another plat another data centers, uh, you know, depending on you want to save on your storage and, and different demands or, you know, depending on the criticality of the data that uh, you want to transfer, you can do a selection uh, on the data replication too. And then uh, uh, virtually zero RTO, RPO, we, we are going to discuss this in detail, you know, going forward. And then it's a total uh, non-invasive. Uh, that means it's very secure technology. You can 
turn it on or off based on whenever you want to do data replication and, and there is uh, no mod modification you will be doing at source code so you basically uh, you know have the access to just to your data and uh, not uh, to the algorithm so and then you know how it works is basically uh, a proxy server that we deploy on each clusters so that cluster could be you know Azure, S3, you know, OpenStack, uh, you know, Swift, IBM, and then uh, Google Cloud. So it could be, could be any cluster that you have all across uh, your data centers. And let's say, you know, on, on all the clusters, we deploy a proxy server. It's not a master-slave architecture. It's basically, you know, peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, and uh, it it is exposed to. HCFS is all the file systems that are compatible with the Hadoop. Uh, it is exposed to the API that is uh, HCFS enabled. And then uh, there is a fusion technology uh, through which the applications could connect to HDFS. So it, what it does is, uh, is Big Replicate is something that would uh, make all your data centers uh, uh, so, I mean, sound like exactly one one large data center. Like the connectivity is uh, basically very strong, and and how how the data replication take place and uh, what it does is is actually we are gonna talk about now. And then you know it provides a single virtual namespace uh, across clusters, and the distance does not matter. It could be uh, your clusters could be anywhere, and. Uh, it it does uh, uh, break down all the uh, you know information silos or or you know network latency is one of the key factors and uh, let's say there is one one cluster and you want to uh, replicate the data among and there are three clusters you want to replicate the data among three it does uh, you know replicate the active active uh, transactions on all three of them so no matter where, uh, what data center you want to perform a query, you can actually, you know, do it in real time. Synch you can actually feel the real time synchronization uh, on your data centers, and then it it does replicate cloud object storage and and your uh, NFS mounted systems, uh, NFS mounted file systems. It's it's basically a, a different protocol how uh, your data is transferred over cloud or over network. And uh, uh, then there are certain features of, uh, you know, Big Replicate is it's basically 100% uptime. So we we kind of tend uh, to say that it's 100%. It, it, there are certain cases when, you know, uh, let's say there is uh, one one network uh, uh, breakdown or one data center that uh, you know, let's say it breaks down. Then and you are transferring some data onto that. Uh, Particular cluster, and and the, let's say there is a hundred GB file, and you have only transferred fifty GB yet. So there are there are chances, uh, you know, where that recovery, you know, is a little tricky. So we do say it hundred percent uh, uptime, uh, which is true in you know most of the cases. So it's basically, you know, uh, it would reduce your costs and. You don't have to log in with one particular vendor. You have, you don't have to go with the IBM or Google or Microsoft. You can particularly use uh, any of the technology in order to have big replicate or data replication. And then the complexity is reduced. Data is protected. It's just very secure. And you know we are going to show the different type of uh, authentication schemes, uh, including Kerberos and third-party uh, you know uh, trust that we use. And then it's it could be easily deployed on cloud or hybrid cloud, so that's another feature. Uh, benefits we discussed, uh, you know, apart from that, we have uh, continuous availability and performance. Is uh, uh, you know, it's basically land speed read and write that is provided at all the locations, and uh, it, it could be installed on top of live clusters, uh, and the downtime downtime would be. You know, if you are manually deploying, it could be just one or two hours, but not more than that. Uh, you know, at the basic installation, and it's uh, you know, or it's zero downtime. You can even continue working on your clusters live, 
and uh, then we have support for different uh, distro uh, and multiple versions of the same uh, distributing OS so so it enables migration and upgrades uh, across clusters so they, let's say there is an upgrade then without any downtime we would be able to perform that upgrade uh, so let's say there's a newer version of uh, Big Replicate that uh, is announced, uh, you know, then, then Big Replicate claims that they would, uh, you know, do upgrade without any downtime, which is a very good benefit. And then clusters can be, you know, on-prem or in cloud, so it's not just that, uh, you know, the companies or, or, you know, people who want to have the clusters uh, install on prem they're not able to use you no know, they they would also be able to use the technology and then we're able to do uh, full use of uh, resources uh, and we don't you know it claims that uh, no money is wasted doing read only backup clusters uh, and uh, the multi data center ingest that we can perform so you can basically pretty much ingest and analyze data from any location and that could be concurrent so it, it deal, you know it eliminates the risk of moving data let's say you have to move the data you don't have to send out those bulky emails and uh, you know saying that people saying it to people that you know you need to wait for us because we are performing upgrades so those kind of things are taken care of here and then you can do selective replication, as I said, and you know the data protection is one of the other key features of this product. And uh, it's, it's flexible, it's future-proof, uh, it's been upgraded, and you know a lot of releases have been, uh, you know, already launched. And it does get uh, upgrades as when technology is, uh, you know. Taken to next step. Let's say there's a newer version of uh, of uh, Redshift or Big Repli or Big Insights or any other you know cloud platform or or Hadoop application you you know then that's when Big Replicate is uh, uh, upgraded too. So it could be deployed on any number of uh, Hadoop distributions. Could be on prem or cloud or hybrid cloud. And then uh, there's a hybrid cloud and cloud migration that is uh, one of the other features of uh, Big Replicate. What are the different use cases? Whenever we are talking about, so most of the companies nowadays, what they does is they have uh, they have a lot of locations, and on all those locations, they have a lot of data. All that data needs to be, you know, seen by executive level people, sales people, and all the vendors who are actually uh, selling or you know are in in regular touch with clients. We can, we can take uh, example of a retail store. So a retail store that has uh, locations all over the in the United States, let's say Chicago and uh, New York, and you know all different places. So they do have data coming in from there. That all that data could be landed to one particular data lake or a data repository, and that that could be analyzed in order to generate reports that uh, you know the number of sales at this particular location has. Uh, you know, exceeded so so and so amount, and uh, you know, let's say it's if it's a retail company that deals in you know, let's say fashion or clothing. So let's say there is a particular type of uh, uh, shirts; so those are sold out and are in demand. So that that particular demand can be compensated, uh, you know, onto the uh, you know, analyzing in real time that uh, you know these are the shipments that you need to transfer or ship to this particular location since they are sold out. So those kind of uh, crucial real-time analytics can be drawn out using data lakes. So data lakes is, uh, the concept is very clear. It's basically having all the data in one single repository where where you can generate dashboards or reports for all level of people. So for executive level, they would know that, you know, this shipment is in process, progress. The vendors would know, yes, they are expecting the delivery at this time and they should be there at the store. And for people who are actually doing the shipping, they would be aware that uh, this is the location they would be picking up the, uh, you know, apparels in order to deliver it to that particular location. Whereas at the same time, the manufacturer would also know that they have to produce this much amount of uh, apparel in order to send it out. So that data lake concept is is widely accepted by all the companies all across uh, industries. And then, you know, as as I say, that it's a 360 degree view of a global supply chain where you can manage uh, 
all you can have all the uh, level of uh, employees or uh, people who are involved in the business processes uh, to actually uh, you know define their requirements and to actually gain insights on the product we can also do trend analysis and predictive analytics uh, you know and compliance monitoring based on uh, you know these data lakes so it's it's Big, big replicate comes in play when you have to move that data from that particular vendor to the data lake. Also, when you have to maintain that data, so it's very crucial to maintain that um, that data in order to uh, do these analysis and and perform these uh, predictive analytics or do a compliance monitoring. Because uh, uh, you know the more we are uh, you know having um, protecting the data the more we would be you know streamlining the processes so there are different uh, requirements that these processes often face that uh, you know the data is actually ingesting so let's say there's a sale sale of point at uh, one particular location that's in new york and you are able to buy one product so that that data that this person bought this product you know associated to your email id so you know whenever you swipe a credit card that that uh, particular barcode item has been sold to you that data is actually ingested from one location and it could be ingested from different locations or sources so that that data ingestion is happening almost uh, during the day at different locations and parallelly and the number of users are are uh, basically performing the transactions in real time and, and you know concurrently so that uh, and then it becomes a responsibility to uh, for you know having the data consistency and data integration in order to do the real time analytics in order to analyze and do a predictive analytics and also in order to maintain your supply chain management or, or global supply chain so uh, you know with using this technology there is a 24 by 7 operation with no downtime and and no data loss so you can actually uh, be very confident in running your uh, business processes uh, and uh, you know that's one of the major use cases that uh, Big Replicate has. Another is you can do real-time analytics. As I said, uh, you know uh, it, you can actually you would actually know that uh, this is the point of time you are able to uh, you know send more items onto your store. So this is this is just an example, but uh, you can also know the person who's swiping the credit card at your point of sale. Is basically it's is not a you know fraud customer. He's not somebody you know who's using someone else's credit card based on. And we can actually look at the trends and buying habits and and those kind of other analyses so that the company doesn't face issues from the uh, you know merchant processor or or onto their gateway. So industrial sensor data analysis. You can also you know do analysis on based on sensors like uh, let's say it could be uh, what let's say if there's a person in a store and he has uh, five different type of toothpaste and he is particularly you know he is basically looking up at one one type and he wants to pick up another type so what are the probabilities that he is going to go with what kind of uh, toothpaste he bought so those kind of uh, you know buying habits are, are basically uh, you know you can analyze them using sensor data so so let's say when you are picking up one particular item and then you are placing it back so so it goes in the system that uh, you know using the sensors that this item was removed from the shelf and then it was put back again so so there was a potential buyer uh, and he chose this product over the other product why why did he choose that so those kind of analysis you could do using sensor data that's just an example but there, there this area is huge and uh, you know we need to analyze this uh, using uh, fast streaming yes because uh, let's say you know let's say there's one particular brand and, and kept in your store and uh, that person is basically uh, li putting it uh, in lifting it up and that sensor data actually sends that data to you and then he is placing it back and and picking up another thing so you you know as a company you can always make sure in order to send some kind of deal onto his as a message onto his cell phone saying that you know you get five percent off if you buy this product. There are chances then when you know that that particular 
user would want to buy that product because he just got a message that he is getting 5% off. So those kinds of real time uh, uh, you know, offers or, or you know, promotions you can perform using, uh, using real time analytics. So that's, that's another thing. And then a hybrid and cloud migration, there, there's this uh, you know, storage that comes in place all the time because it's a lot of money in order to store this data and you know, as, as we, we speak in the slide, cost containment and uh, you know, off-site disaster recovery is one of the other important features. So it, you know, basically what it does, it unifies all on-prem or cloud clusters, gives you one single uh, data repository view. So that way you are not missing out on any particular data. And, none of your um, members in that business chain is not uh, getting a, a blockage from the view that they're supposed to. So what are the common replication techniques? Why is uh, big replicate better than why it's the world's only man technology that is able to perform uh, data replication? So. So multi-data center Hadoop today, you know, we are doing periodic uh, synchronization or parallel data in just so there, there are techniques that are in place. There are, uh, you know, uh, connectivities that provide that data migration. There are, there are self, uh, you know, shell scripts that you can write in order to do the data transfer. But then, but then, big replicate is something that defines it uniquely. This, this being, you know, you, you can say that, you know, nowadays that. Uh, and in data center, Hadoop, um, big data centers, uh, you can run jobs using MapReduce, you can write your shell scripts, you can write a Java code in order to perform migration, you can use uh, you know, other techniques in order to, there are some, some queries that you can write in order to move particular data, but that's, uh, that's uh, some, some task that you have to perform because uh, you know, the key challenges that you face are the frequency of the data it's it, you know the kind of loads that you're doing is it an incremental load is it uh, is it like a full-time load it's it's full-time data in jazz it's uh, it's something that uh, is completely dependent and demanded by the business so uh, i you know big replicate has, it takes in consideration all those points and uh, and do perform communication how does we do that we would quickly you know move up to the slides that where you know how we do the data transfer there are well, certain other points where you know we say that uh, we move data why we do it for backup for disaster recovery for computer computer restraints and for high availability but then uh, you know because uh, just to give an idea we would you know go to the technical overview yeah so this is the patented uh, the con e uh, technology that enables active active replication so with guaranteed data consistency over over clusters uh, you know using LAN or WAN both and uh, you know as I had already discussed that it is uh, all about uh, you know there's no vendor lock and you can use map or you know one of the other uh, cloud or cluster provider and then you can use ENC Isilon or, or Amazon S3 or M Microsoft Azure or, or Google Cloud Storage or IBM or you know whichever technique uh, you want to use there's no vendor lock-in for it and then there are software development kits that are available on GitHub and also you know several other places you can always uh, we can always share those kind of uh, resources with everyone and then there is a continuous availability and disaster recovery that is provided over van over van so so that's what i said i've been uh, you know telling from the presentation that uh, you know all the clusters and all the locations they give a unified view they appear act and operate as a single cluster so you are not missing out on on any any data across uh, any location and there are no failure points that that you would then you know we have taken in consideration that uh, you know based on enhanced Paxos algorithm. So Paxos algorithm is basically the algorithm behind writing this, this framework. So we've been analyzing this uh, from quite some time now. How would be the experience at LAN at WAN distance? So so there are there are certain technical points where uh, we need to be a little cautious while transferring the data so you know what they are we would discuss it now 
before that we have the architecture principle so there is a synchronous replication there is a synchronous replication you uh, it's basically you know active active or it could be active passive too so when I say active active or active passive I mean that with active active it's uh, it's read and write both and with active passive it's read and write plus read so there are there are certain times when uh, a particular cluster goes you know it, it breaks down or, or it, it goes into a safe mode where it's uh, just uh, performing a read so that safe mode is, is basically a passive and it would it would come back uh, you know whenever there is a recovery and and then all the data is always synchronized to it so that's another feature how the Kani works so there's a majority quorum uh, let's skip to another slide that that would uh, showcase it more easily so yeah, over here. So we have uh, we have A, B, and C as three clusters. As we see, we have HCFS Hadoop compatible file systems, HDFS Hadoop distributed file system, S3, and and MapR, or it could be any other cluster provider. So what happens is, uh, you know, there's this user, this this one user is trying to write a file or construct a file on A. So A, a is basically coded by a Fusion server. So Fusion Server has, uh, you know, the Paxos algorithm. So how it works is, whenever a user wants to perform a write on A, A is basically using Fusion Server. He wants to perform a write on onto his cluster. So he would send a write request, and then there is this proposal that is sent to other two Fusion services. Those are coordinating with the clusters. So as you might see, there's this. Uh, user who wanted to perform a write he's he when he sent out that command there is a proposal that is sent out to B and simultaneously to C so so once he has sent out the proposal there is agreement that has been sent out from B and C to A so what it does is basically acknowledgement that whenever he's trying to make a directory on A with the name test and at the same time, some other user at B is trying to perform the same write saying test. This is an acknowledgement from B and C that test has been already, uh, you know, created in A. So that way is we are able to perform this active active replication. So this is the underlying thing um, that defines how it works. And then after after that proposal and agreement that right is performed on cluster A and then it is uh, you know it's uh, communicated to B and C so that's how the you know active active application is maintained it's very it's uh, you know very convenient to understand using this diagram that uh, how the technology is basically performing the application so you know uh, quickly moving to to the demo uh, since uh, we have 30 minutes left, I would uh, definitely want to share the live version of Big Replicate. So, so this is uh, this is something that uh, that we have. Uh, you know, I would hand it over in order to look at how the technology actually works. So we basically have a uh, we basically have a demographic area. This is uh, this is a dashboard of Vendisco Fusion. And I'm not sure if the audio is yeah, has been replicated. So yeah. On this dashboard interface, we can see the location by two clusters. I have a cluster in California and one in Virginia. Each of these clusters is running two big replicate servers. This is why I have four tabs open. Each one represents an individual a dashboard interface, just like the one we're looking at here in this region and zone called West 1. If I scroll down, I can see a list of all the activity that's been performed in the recent hour. And I can also see the volume of data that's been replicated recently, which could be impactful for my life, which currently has an 11 terabyte limit. If I keep scrolling down, I can see the Java heap consumption at each of these big replicate servers. 
So I can look at the health of the server themselves, and if something like memory or disk space or CPU looks like it's reaching into its critical categories, I can get email notification on that as well as things like when the node goes offline, and I can take the appropriate action such as increasing memory or adding more CPUs. So additionally in this interface, we have a way to look at the individual servers. We can pull up details, we can view logs, we can see what is uh, included as far as plugins on each of these nodes and uh, see IP address and other information such as that. Uh, the real area of interest in this interface is the replication tab. And here we see all the directories that we want to use for replication. Now replication is an opt-in process with Big Replicate that means you have to define the directories that you want to use for replication. These are active peers, all these nodes, all four of them, which means they're all read write nodes at the same time but only one server at each cluster location will write to the path at a given time. We call this the writer node. Here you can see I have what we call a consistency report that will show me the differences between the two clusters. I can run this report at any time or I can schedule that to run at automated times and even email um, a report when the clusters go inconsistent. Now the consistency report will only display the results on the writer node. So the first two directories I have listed here are the writer node of West 1 and the other two are the writer node is on West 2. So I would have to go to that node to see the results. So let's do that. I'm going to go over to my West 2 node. You can see the information here is fairly redundant. It shows some of the high availability capability of the big replicate server. So if one goes offline, the other one's able to continue functioning. And I can pull up my inconsistency report for this user and bar AQA directory. Now, the consistency report is a very important feature in Big Replicate. It shows us the differences between the two clusters, yes, but it also allows us to resolve those differences. Uh, so the type of differences you'll see here are missing files, things like metadata inconsistency. So, for example, here the username is HDFS in cluster 1. It's Hive in cluster 2. And um, group and, and ACL permission will also be included in this different board. Now, I can resolve these file by file. So I go to the first file, the per boot file. I can tell cluster 2 to copy to cluster 1 by selecting cluster 2 as the source of truth. I can also delete the file on cluster 2 by selecting cluster 1 as the source of truth. And if I want to resolve all these changes recursively, I can go to this repair tab, select cluster 1 as the source of truth, choose to do a recursive or repair the whole folder option, and select this repair button. That will go and queue up a repair operation, which will copy all the files that are missing from cluster 1 to cluster 2. And because I chose not to preserve any files, it will automatically delete or clean up any additional or extra files on cluster 2. In essence, what I'm doing with this operation is making the two directories on the two clusters match one another. Um, and then I can go back to this consistency tab and let me wait for the report to load. And once it does, I can click this recheck button to queue up a new consistency check on that directory, which you can see is now showing up as consistent, which is what you would expect after you execute the consistency check. Um, now, this is a solution that is a very point and click. So I can click this create button here and walk you through the process of adding a new replication folder. Um, I can browse the HDFS directory tree. If I click on the folder icon, I can expand the directories themselves and see what all the subdirectories are. And then I click on the name itself to add the directory that I want to replicate. So I'm going to add this REPL3 folder. I'm going to select the zones that I have. I only have two clusters right now, so two zones. But if you have three or four or five, such as uh, testing or dev or multiple production or disaster recovery sites or even a cloud site, you'd be able to define customized replication patterns for each of those. I'm going to skip any events options and go ahead and just create that directory. I can then do a consistency check on this folder once the writer has been assigned. Again, the writer assignment so that uh, only one of these servers is writing to a directory at any given time. If that server goes offline, a new writer gets elected. So in other words, if West 2 is the writer and he goes offline, someone tries to do the write, West 1 gets elected the new writer, and he begins to write. That way you don't have any loss of replication operations during any production usage. So I'm going to go over to 
West One, which is the writer, and pull up my consistency report. Here you can see I have a bunch of files that exist on the left side, uh, cluster one, that are on the right side, cluster two. Now, when you're adding Big Replicate into an environment for the first time or doing the migration, this can be pretty common. Uh, you may have a bunch of data on your production cluster, but none in the ER cluster. You would use this feature to move all the data to the disaster recovery site, or if you're doing a migration, for example, from an older version of Big Insights to a newer version of Big Insights, or maybe you're moving from Clutter and Hortonworks to Big Insights, uh, you'd be able to use this feature to move the data from the old cluster to the new cluster. Now, while that's running, um, that repair operation, there is uh, quite a good size of data. We can actually see the data in flight. So one of the neat things that Big Replicate can do is show you incoming transactions. So while that data is moving from cluster one to cluster two, I can actually watch it. Uh, I can see how fast it's moving. I can see the time it started. I can see the time it completes. And in this way, I can monitor the health of my network as far as the replication is concerned. And I can also see an audit of recently replicated data and maybe even get an idea for when my five gigabyte file will, com will complete replicating across the WAN. Now this is an active active solution, so I want to queue up a nice little active active scenario just to show you that the big replicate server can be used to perform many different tasks at the same time. Now in this scenario where I'm moving all the large you know, chunks of data from cluster one to cluster two, this might re represent some type of migration. But while you're doing migration on a production cluster, you may have new data that's incoming all the time. And because we're active and active, I can generate new data in both clusters. So what I'm going to do is use Terragen, which is a, a benchmarking tool in Hadoop to generate a new 12 gigabyte data set in each cluster. And while that runs, once again, I will be able to uh, see the data arrive as it's being generated. Now, another new thing that we do with Big Replicate is that we can send data into the WAN cluster, the remote cluster, in this case the DR site, cluster two, uh, while the files are being generated. So before this MapReduce job even finishes, uh, while it's still running, once it gets to the reduce phase, it'll start writing data, we will be able to see that, uh, that those files are incoming into our cluster before the MapReduce job is even finished. And what this means is that Big Replicate will be able to provide the best possible RPO. And RPO in this case means um, the ability to reduce the amount of data loss, recovery point objective, to the absolute minimum. And we can make that claim because we can actually transfer the data in the HDFS cluster before it's fully written to the cluster itself by grabbing the first block available and sending it to uh, the remote cluster. And with other solutions, other copy solutions, you would have to at least wait for the files to be generated before you can move them. And we have no such hang up with Big Replicate. And here we can see that transfer has started, uh, that the data is still in the Terragen temporary directory, so the final files haven't been created yet. And uh, already the data is transferred. So this is a great feature that Big Replicate offers. Uh, not only is it active active, not only can you do migrations while you're doing data transfers uh, for new production data. Uh, we can send the data even before it fully lands in the cluster. So, you know, the, this is to demonstrate uh, a number of things with Big Replicate. Uh, one is the ability to actively move data. Uh, two is to show how we can transfer jobs such as, you know, MapReduce jobs, and this can be applied to things like Hive and other applications, HBase, anything running in the cluster. And the important thing to note here is that Big Replicate does not run as part of a MapReduce job itself, or it does not use Yarn. It is its own replication engine. So data replication is occurring from Fusion Node to Fusion Node. That's the purpose of those writers. And this means that we are not interfering with the production performance of your cluster. So you can run this thing continuously all day long and really even out the performance of the network, which would typically be using you know large times scheduled batch based. Um, copies that would clobber your no networks typically. But with the big replicate system, not true. We're doing continuous data replication. You can still see the activity uh, chart moving down here. Um, and that allows you to have a much more smoother impact on the network over a longer duration and 
the fact that we don't have any impact on the production cluster means that you can run this continuously and thereby achieve much better SLAs through RPO and RTO. Thank you for watching this demonstration. So uh, coming back to uh, you know the RPO and RTO uh, as a big replicate delivers you know local network speed read and write access to the same uh, data across every location could be on prem or in cloud at any distance uh, there is a, there are built in continuous hot backups that uh, you know with with automated recovery that delivers the lowest possible you know RTO RTO is the recovery time ob objective and uh, RPO stands for recovery point objective. So, you know, that means that uh, the demands of the business are, you know, met the most and uh, including the regulatory requirements. So, so there are reduced costs and, and other, other several other factors uh, with simplified backup and recovery migration and expansion and also migrating to cloud and going hybrid with, the, with absolutely no problem and zero downtime. So, uh, you know, this is uh, this is mostly the uh, an overview of uh, uh, big replicate uh, that uh, you know we we were demonstrating over here. It's uh, it's the one of the finest technology and uh, uh, you know one of the key features that uh, helps uh, uh, you know attain one of the most uh, you know. Uh, discussed objective of data migration and uh, data transfer you know it uh, with, with IBM big replicate I mean it makes it possible for the first time ever to migrate production data um, into the cloud and without without downtime or data loss uh, and once we have migrated uh, it, it becomes very easy uh, to go hybrid and move data in and out of the cloud as as, as it changes or you know could the changes could be incrementally or or one time load or you know on demand or or burst out processing and or offsite data replication too and uh, you know it, it's basically uh, works as as the data streams in so it's it's you know files do not have to be like fully written and closed uh, before transferring the data one one other thing that we that we mentioned over here about uh, mm, you know, big replicate is uh, uh, it's you know. Let's say there there are times when uh, one data center, let's say A, uh, it's you know, a asteroid hits it and it's not in use, and it goes it goes back into a safe zone where you know in that that safe zone, what happens is uh, uh, B and C are working as uh, the uh, active active peers and and the you know, decision that what would be the name of that particular file or what write command to execute would be based on the majority quorum. And and at that point of time, and B and C are the only one that are alive, so it works as peers, not as master slaves. So they both have the capability of deciding on performing a write. And when A comes back up, that is the time when B and C can synchronize all the data to A. And that's that's how the data synchronization and data failure or data recovery is possible. And then there, it's this non-invasive uh, technology. It runs as a client application and and could be managed using CM or Ambari. So for uh, for Ambari, we actually have uh, IP addresses that we can you know uh, demonstrate based on uh, uh, you know we can actually look all the uh, technologies uh, those are uh, we can uh, you know these are the technologies that uh, that is from uh, you know a cluster where you have HDFS MapReduce or you know all all other clusters running and uh, you can actually have this Vendor Fusion service and taking care of, uh, taking care of the data replication and and, and it could be at any uh, cluster provider or Hadoop service provider so. And uh, IBM uh, Big Replicate replication is basically it's uh, it's again a, a distributed coordination. It's not a master slave architecture. It's uh, it's when all Big Replicate server functions as peers to deliver the same transaction order at every every side, as I mentioned, and uh, also based on when discourse patented enhanced specs algorithm, and it gives you uh, a LAN experience even at a wide area network distance. So you feel like you're the you know removing the sil network silos and uh, you are working in uh, synchronization in real time 
opportunity and endpoints. Uh, you know, there are new opportunities, new customers for you know there are uh, there are points when uh, people want to opt for big insights. Big replicate uh, is a re real value add-on that comes with it, and it could be on-prem or cloud. It could on cloud. It could be on Bluemix or software layer or with Spark. On-prem, it could be you know with with customers who are uh, in production and who are ready to add a disaster recovery process or on secondary clusters that are into you know QA or development environment you know those requiring real time analysis or or analytic clusters. It's really unique because it is consistent across and guarantees consistency between between the source and the target clusters, and it, you could even select the particular folders. The user interface is is basically drag and drop and click, so it's very easy, and you can even see what are the files that are transferred, even with the file size and transfer duration. And then if we can perform consistency check, uh, visually analyzing the inconsistencies and making making decisions. You know, if you want to have the data or no, or if you want to turn off or on the feature. So so that is uh, another thing. And uh, then we have uh, other opportunities where we can utilize uh, uh, or or sell big replicate or you know talk about uh, environments. Uh, so these are these are strategies or or you know plans that comes in handy. You know, good for customers who are opting a disaster recovery, who are offered Spark as service, and uh, you know. Who allows you to, you know, basically have a timestamps or footprint on on your data centers? It's a, it supports active or transactional synchronization between multiple Hadoop vendors and uh, comes with the big insights upgrades of three version three X and four X in a new environment and uh, migration from uh, uh, you know existing Hadoop clusters to big insights it, it could do that or or you know vice versa like cloud era hortonworks map r or s3 you know you can you can do the migration from there and it maintains consistency to the same folders in both directions so when when i say both direction it means the source and target and uh, it's basically you targeting the uh, you know, direct uh, target directory, and uh, then you are performing any other updates on the target directory. The same would be replicated onto your source too. So it protects you in an event when when you want to be back to your originating cluster. That's that's something you know, which we could also say you know roll back another snapshot feature is much more advanced than that so the rollback is is basically when you know you have a point where you are actually making a, a, a network image or, or a data image of your cluster and you want you're setting up it as a as a checkpoint and then going forward you know after a month of work you decide uh, I mean coming back to that particular point when your data was in a safe mode or when you had a backup. So that's that's basically rolling back your cluster to that particular point based on a footprint or a stand. So you know there are uh, there are uh, you know probabilities when you might have a data loss and those probabilities are let's say when uh, you are actually moving a file onto one cluster and the cluster goes down and at the same time uh, the, there are network you know you are in the process of transferring a particular file to cluster A so let's say the file size is 25 gig and you have transferred 12 gig of file to cluster A and cluster A goes down this is the time when it's gaining proposals and agreements and it's transferring data so it might have transferred data to B and C which would be just 5 or 10 gigs but not complete 25 gig so at that point of time if your A is recovered then your data could be recovered but if you you know due to some reason your A fails and it never comes back and there are there are chances that you might lose those 25 gig of data but you can always recover the the data that is transferred to VOC, but that is just specific to network latency. It's in the type of uh, speed you are uh, getting onto your, uh, you know, network. So, so which is also you know something that you can boost uh, using other technologies. So, uh, let's say you know when we talk about network latency, let's say there is a point when A is transferring data to B, 
which would be faster than A is transferring data to C. So, so that is another scenario that uh, you know the network data transfer is faster to one cluster than another. So there there might be a chance when you have seven gig of data in B and five gig of data in C. So, but that is at a particular time and it's a very rare case. So, existing competitive Hadoop distributions, there are different distributions, there are like on-prem cloud, hybrid cloud, and then, you know, there are transformation and migration phases, what are the advantages, you know, when you add, uh, you know, edge nodes, uh, addition of big replicate edge nodes to, you know, the current environment, so that's like a very minute change you'll have to do, and then there are, uh, you know, different a transition phase that there are standards from uh, you know this uh, technology and it, it also is a short term disruption to Hadoop users so it's it's also a competitive distribution so th this is another uh, you know advantage and the drawbacks is like uh, there are not the architectural changes that are happening right now and uh, it's a bring your own license model it, it requires a dedicated failover environment and uh, you know it's a managed service it needs a little support to the cluster with additional cost and then we already walked everyone through the demo uh, this is the time when I would invite uh, our audiences uh, uh, to ask questions or uh, you know clear their queries if they have some. Adam, there's already some questions that have been asked. Yeah. Um, the first one is, what happens with the latency problems? Yeah. So with latency is, uh, you know, there are tools like Spear that helps uh, network latency boost up. But then as I described, uh, let's say you have three clusters, A, B, and C, and uh, you are transferring your data from, uh, you know, one user database to a cluster A, and during that transfer, that particular transfer, when you have transferred 50 gig of data, and uh, you are in process of doing that, let's say there's a failover, that's the point when you know the recovery is not possible if it's a total failover of A and the transfer is not complete. But apart from that, which which is a very rare case, apart from that, let, network latency is uh, you know not uh, is something that we have addressed here or that big replicate has addressed here. So from from when you are transferring data to A and simultaneously A is gaining agreement with B and C you know, sending out the proposal and gaining agreement, and that's, you know, while you're transferring the data to A, that data is also transferred to cluster B and cluster C. So, you know, it is active, active that time, so based on that network uh, latency capacity, and which which could also be, you know, in, enhanced using a tool called Spear. So, so that's the answer for that. Okay, uh, the next one is, why doesn't the UI retain the full path in the data replication rule? So it's a custom defined path that you can define in your configurations. So uh, it, it would definitely, uh, you know, gets replicated onto different web, different uh, sites, different clusters. So, it, you know, whenever you define your configuration file or first implementation of Big Replicate, it would definitely, uh, you know, take the path that is associated to it and you know that is what is shown and considered okay and the sure. last question is does this tie into atlas or ranger so atlas and ranger uh, is, is basically you know those are part of orchestration tool so this is uh, one complete uh, uh, independent thing but uh, I can show you definitely show the services that it's, it's tied up uh, uh, to. Let me just uh, try to. So it's, there are there are these open source services that it could tie it to. So these are public IPs that are available. So 
so it's basically So the support is uh, as as you could see in, on my screen. You know you can actually tie up uh, to your uh, Hadoop cluster, and uh, and you know there are settings you can do and have all your orchestration uh, you know tools associated to it. So it would basically you know be connected to. Uh, your you know Hadoop cluster and your if if you have uh, HTTP authentication or Kerberos authentication on your Ranger, so it's basically how you set up your configuration. So that is at the time of implementation that happens. So yes, it I mean the answer would be yes, it could tie it up uh, to Ranger. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Well, thank you so much for joining us. I would like to remind you that there's a handout that you can download from the GoToWebinar uh, control panel, and it has information about uh, future webinars that you may be interested in. Also, if, if there are some other questions regarding uh, Big Replicate, you can always uh, tweet me the questions, and I would uh, you know love to get back to you know, my Twitter handle is Sivaj Gautam. So. You can always provide comments and feedback there. So, so yeah. Thank you so much, and thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, everyone.